Hello everybody, it's Han Sang here. So today I wanted to talk about how to set up Windows Mixed Reality Portal, Steam VR for Windows Mixed Reality Portal, um, so that you can have the best experience in DCS. Now when I installed this a while back, I actually left everything as default. And when I flew the F-A-18 Hornet and the F-16 Viper, it was actually very, very silky smooth. But recently on the DCS forum, someone asked, hey, where do I go to set up all these resolutions? Um, some people actually change the setting in multiple places, causing your windows to actually do a lot more work when portraying the VR world inside the goggles. Okay, and that's, we call that super sampling. Um, and in DCS, we call it pixel density, PD, settings. They're all synonymous. So play around with these settings, but I'll show you what I did to achieve, uh, like I said, silky smooth performance in DCS. And these are some of the settings that I'm going to play around with because I want to see if I can push my machine further uh, to get even better experience than what I'm getting. So when you first is plugged in your helmet display, with any recent version of Windows 10, I'm on Windows version 1909, um, but even going back even two, three versions of Windows 10, Windows Mixed Reality came with Windows. When you plugged it in, you should have already gone through all the calibration and installation of Windows Mixed Portal. All right, once you've done that, let's check what kind of helmet goggles that I have, helmet display I have, and it's the HP Pro Reverb. And I'm not using boundary room boundary, so I have that turned off. In fact, I didn't even set up my controller because I don't plan on using that within DCS. But you can actually click on here, see more, and you can see that there's OpenXR, setup controllers, and settings. So we're going to want to click on settings, and you can change these settings if you like on audio and speech. If you use um, Viacom, for example, or other voice commands, which is highly recommended for controlling DCS uh, menu, especially the communications menu. And let's go down to a helmet display here, headset display. And this was actually not on high. This was all on automatic. When I everything's default, it'll show up as automatic. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around between automatic and high or very high to see if I get something better. This one was the default, so it already said that, hey, you know, based on your native resolution of your head helmet mounted display, whatever yours might be, keep in mind that Vive, uh, HP, I'm sorry, Vive, Index, um, even the new Odyssey Plus and the new Riff. Um, has 1440, I believe, for the vertical resolution, uh, but of course HP Reverb has 2160. Okay, so that's what it's set at, best quality. The other one here is that this is a little bit confusing. So here it says calibration, and they're talking about IPD, which is the interpupillary distance. Mine happens to be 60.5.5. Um, I'm not sure how effective this is, given that HP Reverb only doesn't have a physical dial. Um, to where you can s turn the dial to physically move the lens, the two lenses, uh, to meet your uh, optimal IPD setting. But when I put on my HP Reverb, it looks pretty sharp to me, and I don't have any issues. Okay. Now keep in mind, in DCS controller setup, there's a value called uh, IPD or force IPD. That is actually not IPD of interpupillary distance. That's what's more commonly known as world scale. It changes how big things are in the VR world. So you may want to, you can put the game on pause, go to the options and change the world scale. If the cockpit it seems too small or seems too big to you, uh, that's a good way to change the world scale. But unfortunately, or I guess it's common to use the, the, the terminology the same way, in DCS it's called world scale, uh, IPD. Okay, but not again, DCS calls it IPD, that's world scale. Here, we're talking about the interpupillary distance, the distance between your pupil. Okay, now, hopefully that was clear as mud. But that's all there is to Windows Mixed Reality Setup. That's all I had to do. Okay, now let's look at Steam VR setting. Okay, again, here it is. Um, and I'm at, I just updated mine today to 1.10.1, uh, Steam VR Beta. And you can go through all these settings if you like, but the important one here is devices. 
Okay, I'm sorry, settings. So if you go to settings, um, you can see that the default is here, 90 hertz, um, and I had it set to auto from a render resolution. Okay, now you can change this to custom if you like. If you click on customs, resolution per eye is set to 2960, which is 188 percent. So here's where it gets a little bit confusing. This is the super sampling that Steam VR can do for you. In the world of Steam VR, if you set it at 100%, that is that means no super sampling, okay? And here is close to the native resolution of HP Reverb. So I actually don't want this to super scale at all, okay? So I can leave it at custom or I can put it on auto and uh, everything was silky smooth and I didn't have any issues. But if you want to force the behavior, you can set this here. Now keep in mind, if you say that 150, um, if you wanted to increase your SS value here, in DCS, this is called pixel density. They're the same thing. But if you increase it here you, and you increase it in DCS, you're actually doing double the amount of uh, super sampling okay so it's very important that you pick one or the other you can do it in DCS or you can do it here the other thing that's confusing is that in here in Steam VR 100 is the normal meaning this is no uh, super sampling at all in DCS it's one so if you set it to 1.5 that means you're increasing it by 50%. If, you're, if you set the DCS pixel density value to 2, that's doing it 100%. Okay, so keep that in mind that in Steam VR, 100% means you're not doing any super sampling. Uh, but in DCS, a pixel density value of 1 means you're not doing any super sampling in DCS itself. So once again, pick one or the other. I found that using HP Reverb, I didn't have to increase the pixel density uh, in DCS. Okay, I left it at the value of one, and I didn't need to do it here either. So when I left it at 100%, it was fine. One word of caution: if this number doesn't show up as 20, uh, 2160 at 100%, you have old version of Windows or old version of Steam VR that was not capable of going beyond 21, uh, 1440, I believe it was, okay? So if you have an HP Reverb and you, in your Steam VR setting and you set it to custom and it doesn't automatically know that at 100% you're at 2160 value here, that means you have outdated Windows or outdated Steam VR, okay? Keep that in mind. Also, this was there was a lot of discussion about this. There was one version of Windows, I think it was maybe two versions ago, where there was a bug, and it did not allow you to enjoy the highest resolution of HP Reverb. Okay, so just keep in mind that the 2160 is what you want to see here. Okay, or don't worry about it and set it to auto. I didn't have any issues doing that either. Okay, finally. Oculus Rift um, gave us two different types of reprojections. One was asynchronous time warp, the first version of it, and the second version, which made it smoother, was called ASW, asynchronous warp, I believe. Space warp, I'm not quite sure, it's ASW. And it's the trickery that VR drivers uh, use to interpolate what, when you move your head helmet mounted display fast, it, it Think of it this way, it, it kind of gets rid of the intermediate projections and it predicts where you're going to look at and therefore it saves itself a lot of work instead of having to render everything. Okay, so it's kind of a cheat. So one way to set that in Windows Mixed Reality or Steam VR is by editing a text file. Okay, and this text file is located under Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Mixed Reality VR Driver, Resources, Settings. I guess they really, really, really didn't want you to uh, change this value manually. In mine, it says D drive, but more than likely in your machine, you only have one hard drive. 
uh, which would be C drive or this computer or Windows. Um, I'm not sure what you labeled your uh, computer drive as. So just keep in mind that uh, mine is in, um, I have a C drive for Windows that's an MV, it's dedicated only for Windows and DCS. Everything else I have on an SSD file that's uh, the D drive. Okay, so anyway, yours will be on C, program files, Steam, blah, blah, blah. Now, notice that this text file doesn't have the .txt um, at the end. So when you double click on it, it'll say, I don't know what program to use. Okay, and so the way you can get around that is you can actually right click on it and say open with okay mine already has ultra edit which is a uh, outstanding text editor you might be using notepad plus uh, plus I'm not sure but you can use notepad to look take a look at that okay I don't recommend it because notepad has a tendency to put dot txt at the end um, but there's a way to get around that as well. Okay, so if you don't have Notepad++, Notepad is the only choice you have. Um, so let me show you how to get around that. Okay, so I'm actually not going to open it in um, Notepad. I'll show you that trick in just a second. But the part that we're interested in is this section right here. Notice that motion reprojection is set to auto. However, this slash slash here means that it's commented out. In order for me and the Steam VR driver to uh, enable motion reprojection or the equivalent of asynchronous warp in Oculus Rift terminology, we have to uncomment this for it to take effect. Okay, and then you can turn on um, whether you want to have indicators on, what size, what color, etc. Okay, I didn't really feel the need to turn on uh, asynchronous warp here because for me it's pretty smooth and um, I didn't need to uh, come in here and muck around with this okay now if you do open it in notepad let me just copy everything and bring up notepad let's say you clicked on that file here and you said right click open with and you said search choose another app okay so you click on choose another app and you click on more apps if the notepad is not already there and you can see here that you can use notepad to open it with and then you can say always use notepad to open dot vr settings file that's the extension of this file okay i'm not going to go through that but you can do that if you want um, but here's the notepad file and let's say you modified it and you say file save as then you have to make sure you navigate to where that file is located okay which is program 86 uh, steam and then the next part after steam is steam apps which is here followed by common which is here and then uh, mixed reality driver and after that it's resources settings I guess in mine, I don't have this set up. Maybe it's under C drive. Um, but anyway, yeah, it must be under C drive, I guess. Oh, I know why. Because save as type is here. You have to put it in all files. Okay. And uh, you'll see here. And this is the problem. When, when Windows Notepad defaults to this, it actually shows, expects everything to be .txt. So if you were to type a name here, like um, the file name, which is default dot VR settings. Okay, and then you hit save. You're not gonna actually save this file that Steam VR needs. You're gonna save default dot VR settings dot txt. Okay, and that's why again uh, notepad is not recommended. However, all you have to do to get around that is to double quote here and here. And if you double quote the name Windows will not add .txt extension. Okay, so if you're going to use Notepad, make sure you double quote it, or better yet, just get yourself uh, a real editor like Notepad++ or Ultra Edit, okay, or any other um, editor than Notepad. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. 
or Ask Me in DCS Forum under Input and Output VR for um, there's a, a huge long thread for HP Reverb. Okay, uh, thank you, and I hope it helped.